Hey guys, this is Shrija and welcome back to my channel where I talk all things skincare. So this is acne series part two and for the my acne series part one, I talked about the three important elements of her skin, which I refer to as BAM, barrier, acid mantle and microbiome. So if you haven't checked that video out yet, I highly recommend that you do so now because let's be clear, without understanding BAM, how on earth are you going to understand anything related to skin or skincare? And for my friends, those who already know what BAM is, today I will be talking about all the different things that you could possibly be doing or even the environmental factors that is causing a havoc on your BAM. So you guys know the drill. We are going to cover one element at a time. Let's get started. Skin barrier. Honestly guys, out of the three elements of the skin, your skin barrier works the hardest and that too without any rest. By acting as a wall against the harmful bacteria, along with keeping in all the good moisture in, it really works hard to ensure that your skin is healthy, happy and glowing. Our skin barrier naturally weakens with age. Uh, this usually happens particularly after 40 because with age you also start to lose lipids in your skin which ultimately gives you a dry, flaky and dehydrated skin. Now if you remember from my video on skin barrier, lipids are basically those fat coatings around skin cells which basically holds the barrier together. Now without lipids, to hold your skin barrier together, the transepidermal water loss increases and this results in invisible cracks within your skin barrier. Uh, but age is not the only factor that can weaken your skin barrier. Our wrong skincare habits, uh, wrong skincare routines and unhealthy lifestyle can all contribute to a damaged skin barrier. Uh, for instance, skipping moisturizers, not wearing sunscreen regularly and smoking can lead to oxidization of lipids on your skin and this can in turn damage your skin barrier. Using harsh cleansers that contain sulfate can also strip the natural oils of your skin and give you a dry and dehydrated skin. Uh, over exfoliation is also very counterproductive as it causes, causes surface micro tears in your skin and along with revealing uh, the cells that were not ready to come out. All of this makes your skin more prone to acne, irritation and inflammation. Now I would like to make one point clear here. Right now I just said that using a cleanser with sulfate is not ideal for your skin barrier. But uh, guys, this also really depends upon the formulation of the skincare product or your cleanser and your skin type. Sul uh, sulfate is one of the most wisely used surfactant that is great at cleansing your skin. But due to the green beauty movement, it is getting a very bad reputation. Yes, sulfates are like sort of really drying for your skin. But if you happen to have like very oily skin and you, ha you are using a cleanser that has sulfate in it and has this cleanser has been working fine for you, then there is no need to throw that out. You can continue with that cleanser for as long as you like. Uh, when I was a teenager, I used a sulfate based cleanser without any problem, but now my skin can't take it. So I switched. So, you know, the key is that instead of listening to trends or any green beauty movement or any blogger, you should really first listen to your skin. Really, that's the key. Now, another thing that can uh, severely damage your skin barrier is overusing anti-acne treatments. Yes, I know anti-acne treatments are boon for people suffering from acne. But the sad part is that these treatments can be over drying for your skin and which in turn causes your skin to produce more oil, which in turn give you, gives you more clogged pores and causes the recurring cycling of acne. Now, if you're suffering from acne, you have probably heard these advices many times before. You should wash your face two times a day. You should use an anti-acne medicated face wash to get rid of your acne. Or maybe you should try a really nice scrub to get rid of all those dead skin cells and impurities and then you can get a clear skin. But guess what do these advices have in common? All of them don't work. Yes, in fact, not working is another thing. I feel these advisors cause more damage to your skin by damaging your skin's acid mantle. Using hot water to wash your face, over exfoliating, using harsh cleansers or using undiluted apple cider vinegar, baking soda or lemon juice can all disturb the pH level of your skin and cause damage to your skin's acid mantle. Welcome to my channel, Skin As DIYs. 
I am Dr. Nonsensical DIYs and I have done my PhD in formulating amazing and brilliant skincare DIYs by using household staples. And in today's episode, I'm going to talk about my top three ingredients that you can also use to get a clear glowing skin. Let's begin. Oh, yeah. This is my first ingredient, which you guys can see. It's a lemon. Uh, lemon is such a versatile ingredient. It can help you get rid of your acne problems, acne scarring, hyperpigmentation, tanning, uh, along with giving you a fair glowing skin that you know we Indians are obsessed with. And yeah, I think it can also help you solve global warming. Anyway, let's talk about my second uh, ingredient, which I eat with my breakfast cereal and in lemon, but in, and with lemon water. But sometimes I also use it as a face mask. Yeah, Manuka honey. It's such a great humectant. So why do you need to buy a honey mask? Like just apply pure raw honey on your face. And yeah, but don't sit on the terrace after that. There's a chance that you might get, you know, uh, bee bites or something like that. So yeah, I would not do that. But apart from that, honey is amazing. It's approved by Dr. Nonsensical DIY. And the third ingredient, which is like, which I feel is a magical ingredient for your skin, the most beloved coconut oil. It is so great that, you know, it can help you get rid of acne. In fact, there's a study that claims that coconut oil is 15 times more effective than the traditional benzoyl peroxide. I know, right? Like, why do you want to use anti-acne treatments when we have coconut oil? So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed my nonsensical DIYs, my skin as uh, DIY hacks. See you next time. Bye. No, guys, surely think of it as this way. We all strive to live a balanced life and we do our level best to maintain a balance between our work and uh, home, to maintain a balance between spending and saving. Well, that doesn't count when it comes to shopping for skincare. But yeah, and balance between eating healthy and eating out. But do we ever stop for a minute and think about maintaining a balance between our skin and the skincare products that we are using? I'm assuming not. And honestly, as a teenager, I never paid attention to the pH level of my skincare products. And whenever I looked at the pH rating and like on these Korean skincare products, I thought, yeah, maybe it's just like, you know, another marketing gimmick to like uh, or some advertising technique. But within these past few years, I have learned the importance of pH in skincare. And it is one of the most important things that you should pay attention to because without balancing the pH of your skin, guys, you are never going to get a clear skin. Moreover, it can severely damage your skin microbiome. Skin microbiome is the good bacteria of your skin, which prefers a slightly acidic environment and a pH of around 5.5. Using harsh cleansers, over exfoliating, using antibiotics, using topical steroids and skincare ingredients with strong irritants and preservatives can all cause the good bacteria of your skin to deplete. Now, depletion of good bacteria can give more space for the bad bacteria to thrive and grow, particularly the P acne bacteria bacteria, which in turn makes your skin more acne prone. Now, the skin microbiome also plays an important role in the production of ceramides, which we all know is an important component of the skin barrier. Therefore, any damage to your skin microbiome ultimately leads to damage in skin barrier, which then causes your skin to collapse. So now we know how we damage our BAM, but how do we protect it and bring it back to health? Well, we'll talk about this in my next video. Also guys, if you enjoyed watching this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you next time. Bye.